I'm always brainstorming for new ideas, and there's one that I've had in concept for quite a while now. In fact, you've seen some iterations of it before in the Bonsai Rock Waterfall, Flowing Waterfalls in a Small Jar, the Moss Gorge Waterfalls, and many more. The challenge when doing builds like these is including a pump for water flow. Oftentimes I create a base or external structure to hold the water outside of the terrarium itself. That's all good and well, but I'm always trying to find ways to make it appear more contained. I decided to revisit this concept a few days ago, and when I did, I realized that I've had the perfect container for many years now. This here is the base to what I assume would be a cloche container. I bought it without a top, so I don't know for sure, but luckily I have a few pieces that will be a perfect replacement. You may assume that it would be better for the top to sit on the outside of the glass, like this, but it would actually be better served to sit inside of it, and here's why. This will be a closed system, and much like any other terrarium, condensation will build up on the glass. If the top were to sit on the outside, all this condensation would build up and run down the sides out of the container. This is no good for obvious reasons. So the fact that this one fits on the inside is perfect. That said, I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. I'd prefer if it were near the top, like this. This will allow me to go taller, create a proper reservoir in the bottom, and easily feed the pump's cord out between the glass. Luckily, creating this all should be simple enough. To make it all easy to build, I've selected a piece of expanded PVC board. I measured the inside of the base and translated that over to the board. Then I cut out two identical pieces. As you can see here, the container is bowed and the boards don't sit flat. Using a contour gauge on the opposite side of the glass enabled me to copy this curve and transfer it over to the board. With that bit removed, now the piece sits flat. I repeated this all for the second piece as well. I think this all would work best if the boards nest inside of each other. To do that, I marked for the center on each and used this to account for the thickness of the board. Then I removed some of this area on one of the boards. Placing this one backwards on the other allowed me to determine what to remove. These notches allow them to fit perfectly together and create a base. Now I ensured this would all work prior, but I went on to lock them together with super glue. I applied it to the flat surfaces and nested them together as before. Now that the glue is dried, you can get a better idea of what I did here. This fits perfectly into the base and the pump goes right behind it. This all of course keeps the top piece elevated. I'll hide this all later on so you'd never know it was there. Before I can do that though, I gotta make a few modifications. I want water to pass freely through the plastic, and the easiest way to do that is by cutting a few holes. I created one on each section, as you can see here. This solves one issue, but now debris can pass into the pump vault. Obviously I don't want that, so I got some window screen mesh and glued it over the openings. Once the glue dried, I cut off the excess. Then I got a tube of 100% silicone and applied it to the bottom of the boards. This will lock it to the container. I let it sit for 24 hours, so now the bottom is nice and secure and the top piece rests perfectly on top of it all. With that addressed, I can finally move on to the scape, which is gonna be quite challenging. Obviously I'm working within a small space here, so that's hard enough as it is, but I also want to include a waterfall and a dripping feature. I took a few measurements to get a better idea of how to proceed. I cut out several pieces of PVC board with those. I'll combine these with glue to create a column or overflow box of sorts. Here's the result of that. The top area here would likely leak as is, so I sealed it off with silicone. As it cured, I addressed the pump. To begin, I combined an airline tube with a three-way splitter. This is too small for the pump as is though, so I put a different tube in the opening to act as a reducer to accept a smaller tube size.
Although the pump itself has adjustable flow, I wanted to have this ability with each airline. So I put some valves on them to do exactly that. I need to make a custom piece out of this rigid airline tubing for it all to work properly. I took a heat gun to it and slowly bent it into a hook shape. However, I only need the end. I drilled a hole in the top of the column for this piece. After that, I dry fit all of the components to determine where to attach more airline tubes. The second one here will be used to create a drip vine. In doing so, I decided to use this stainless steel wire. I put it inside of the tubing, which made it possible to manipulate into different shapes. I also drilled a hole in the top to keep it locked in. At this point I figured it would work, but I had to add water to get a better look. The overflow is pretty weak, but I should be able to address that later. As for the other tube, I poked holes all throughout to see if the drip effect was possible. It's very subtle here, but I should be able to dial this in as well. Now that I got the framework all rigged up, it's just about ready for the skate. Before I set that up though, I'm going to guide for another piece that I'll put on the back of the pump to see if I can get better flow on this waterfall here. Now that's more like it. I'm going to get this cleaned up and then we'll get to the scape. I adjusted everything accordingly and here's how it looked. Now then, let's get to scaping with chunks of pagoda stone and dragon root. I placed the column on its side and began stacking the stones. I put them on one by one to get a rough idea of how it should all fit together. Once I liked the design, I went to lock them in with hot glue. This isn't necessarily the best long term solution, but I'll further attach them together later on. Anyway, I stacked them up and secured them in a way that accounts for the directional nature of the stones. After I built up the majority of the structure, I added the driftwood. As before, I locked them in with glue, keeping a consistent direction as I did. This whole process made for something that I think looks pretty cool, but it needs work. There's a lot of excess glue that doesn't look appealing. I'll hide it with cocoa fiber and limestone gravel that I'll lock on with super glue. This technique makes it easy to blend everything together and it actually strengthens the entire structure. I also wired the airline from earlier onto one of the branches. This all looks really incredible, but the sides of the structure are not very appealing, nor will they function well for anything yet. That's where the sphagnum moss comes in. I'll use some fishing line to wrap it along the sides and create a proper growing medium for plants. With that complete, let's return back to the container basin. I stuffed filter foam between the glass and the PVC board to completely partition off the pump vault. As for the rest of this area, I simply filled up with gravel. I put in a fine gravel to start and then filled the rest of it with larger bits. I'll do more with all of that in a little bit but for now, I put all of the pieces back, filled it up, and tested it out. Building something like this is challenging in its own right, but getting the waterfalls to properly translate on video is typically a pain point. That said, I feel pretty good about this one. When I stacked the stones, I made sure to leave large gaps between, which allow the water to cascade. Even so, as I finish up the design, it should flow even better. Being that this is a small build and to keep with the theme, I felt that it made sense to plant it primarily with moss. Just a little bit ago, I scoured my property to see what I could find. I only looked in a few locations and it was really cool to see what type of mosses this place offers. Anyway, now that I got the moss, let's bring this thing to life. I selected a patch of moss and got to work. Then I covered up the sphagnum moss from before with fern moss. I cut up and bent pieces of wire that made it possible to lock the moss in place. 
This kind of acts like a living wall because it's constantly wicking water up onto the living moss. From there, I filled in other crevices throughout to break up the rock work. That said, I did this as minimally as possible to retain the look of the stones and maximize the flow of water. I also filled in the bottom with more moss. Remember that tube from earlier? It's dripping as designed, but it doesn't look good. That's nothing a little bit of java moss won't solve though. I simply tied it around the tube with fishing line. I always find it really enjoyable to make terrariums and other similar projects like this. However, including movement through water just adds a certain level of interest that otherwise isn't present. And in this instance, I'm very pleased with the result. If I were to do it again and change anything though, I would have carried the dripping airline up and around more branches than just the one. Regardless, I think it all looks pretty cool. I want to know what you think though. Be sure to let me know down in the comments. And that's how I created this project and where the video is going to end. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the build and learned something new. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.